Hey guys, TJ from PC Gamer. I'm here with uh, Sam Didier, the Senior Art Director at Blizzard Entertainment. We're here at the Heart of the Swarm uh, launch event. Uh, it's pretty crazy out there. What do you, what do you think so far? Uh, you know, it's a nice warm-up for uh, the festivities tonight. So, you know, yeah. the, the 100,000 people that are here today, it's going to be nothing to the 250,000 at tonight at the Irvine Spectrum. Awesome, awesome. So working, <laughs> working on uh, working on the art uh, heart of the swarm. You know, Wings of Liberty had kind of the old west, almost kind of chop shop junkyard feel with the the ragtag terror and stuff. What were your uh, thematic inspirations for Heart of the Swarm overall? Well, the, the fantastic thing is after working on Wings of Liberty, where you were mm -hmm. saying everything was very space western, blocky, gray, clunky. Right. Working on the Zerg was a, a breath of foul, fabulous poison air because everything was organic and you had to deal with claws and armor right. and teeth and tendrils as opposed to missiles and guns. So uh, basically, you know, we brushed up on our Cthulhu. You know, we brushed up on, uh, you know, the, the underwater uh, deep sea creatures to get inspiration for, you know, what the new Zerg units and stuff would be. So it was, it was actually very, uh, very nice. And if you can use that word refreshing for the Zerg, refreshing to work on the Zerg coming off of uh, Wings of Liberty. So obviously uh, Heart of the Swarm is like, it's, it's more focused on, on one character than maybe anything else Blizzard has done in the past. Uh, what kind of challenges do you guys run into designing the look of a character who's like so central and so essential to everything that's going on? Well, uh, we kind of lucked out. We had a strong foundation on what uh, Kerrigan looked like mm -hmm. from uh, Wings of Liberty. We had already sort of defined her uh, look. And spoiler here, sorry guys, you know, she's, she was desergified at, Wings of, at the end of Wings of Liberty, so we go, hey, well, you know, Kerrigan was a ghost. These suits, you know, not, are not necessarily just assassin suits. They use them to augment their psychic abilities. Mm -hmm. We have the cool ghost suit. We know what she's going to kind of look like. So it really felt, uh, I don't know, like a clean transition for us. She used to be a ghost. Desergified her. She's sort of back in her, you know, augment outfit. Uh, so both versions of Kerrigan that we've, uh, we'll get to experience in this game are, uh, I don't know, pretty iconic, I think, for people who have played the franchise. Who's, uh, whose decision was it to keep the head tentacles? Well, we wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, lots of cool hair is always a good Absolutely. thing yes, in the very game. Much so. very uh, much so. No, I, I, the idea, I think, was to keep to show that there is still, they did their job, but they didn't completely wipe out that Zerg uh, sort of essence that's within her. She is forever changed because of the ordeals that she went through. So now she has to look every morning in the mirror. Mm -hmm at those cool spiky dreadlocks and go, Arcturus Manx, this is your fault. That's why she's mad. She's mad That's because of the head really tentacles. And not all the stuff before is no big deal. It's mostly that, you know, she's going to have a tough time using a comb now for the rest of her life. Gotcha. I can gotcha. sympathize. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> um, so uh, with, with designing kind of the new advisor characters and um, stuff for the Zerg, uh, do you guys find that challenging just because they're alien? How do you, you know, make them feel like people feel relatable, I guess. There was some thought put into this, I will say, because mm -hmm. when you're coming, with Wings of Liberty, it was easy. You got, you know, Swan, hey, how you doing? He's like the, mm -hmm. the kind of New york -y dwarf looking guy, the mechanic. You have Horner who's like, Jim, we got to get going. You know, he's very, so we're trying to think of, okay, well, what are we going to do with the Zergs so that they're not all like, rah, rah, you know, like completely crazy, you know, tentacle, you know, poison sack monsters. So, what we did is, okay, Kerrigan's going to look somewhat human in the beginning. So we got the human aspect covered. So, okay, well, who's going to be the essence of the, the just pure Zerg when you get on the ship? So as you play, you meet Zagara. She's a Zerg queen. She's like, let's kill the Terrans, come on. And Kerrigan's like, relax. You know, that's not all about just charging forward and killing things. Um, so we got that aspect. Then we wanted to have sort of the uh, equivalent of the adjutant. So we came up with Isha, who is connected, sort of like the adjutant with wires and all that, but hers are all with tendrils, uh, connected to the Leviathan ship you're on. People will immediately get that kind of, oh, it's like the adjutant, tells you about what's going on. Um, but we wanted to make her definitely a little bit more zergy. So we gave her uh, for hair. We got a lot of weird things with hair in this game. <laughs> um, her hair are the, basically these tentacles that have like the little sharp mm -hmm. nodes at the end, almost like, you know, you would be plugging in for things. You can imagine her plugging into different elements of the ship. Uh, and then for the armorer, we wanted to make something that didn't really look like the beast he was creating, you know, where the Zerg are all, you know, 
very vicious and brutal and definitely warlike. He looks almost like a thrown together bit. You know, Abathur, he's got this gigantic uh, sort of egg sack on his back and these little spindly arms that look like he'd be a spider weaving webs of DNA and strands of, you know, all the different uh, essence. Uh, so we kind of just hit a couple theme, uh, themes with these guys where we wanted Kerrigan to be the most human. Uh, we wanted someone to represent pure Zerg. We wanted someone to be uh, sort of cold and, uh, you know, away from the whole thing like Isha. And then we wanted to have like a nasty repulsive monster and that's Abathur. So uh, I think we, the, the things that we got really is now we got our little Zerg superhero team. We have the big scary monster. We have the, you know, the smart, uh, you know, human one. We have the, the weird looking guy who's like the mad scientist. And then we have the very cold, calculating, and efficient computer sort of one. So we, we kind of built our own little Zerg hero team out of all these characters. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, do you have a particular favorite piece of new art, whether that's a unit or a character or anything like that, that has gone into Heart of the Swarm? Um, my favorite unit uh, specifically are for the Zerg because we hit some really cool uh, silhouettes and outlines for these that are immediately identifiable, but also very, uh, you know, Zerg in nature. And my favorite is the Swarm Host, which is basically a, a, a Zerg, uh, and it has a giant sort of organic, uh, or not organic, but like Zerg beehive on the back. And out of the little holes and uh, apertures come these little things called locusts that swarm over the unit. Well, when we had made this thing on the concept art, it looked cool, but it really didn't realize its true Zerg creepiness until we animated it and those holes were opening and closing and the little critters were falling out. It actually made some people uh, sick. They said, oh, oh wow. I get sick looking at it. You guys should change that. It's going to be difficult to play. Uh, and I'm like, no, 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 no. We're doing our job <laughs> then. The Zerg need to be getting that kind of a uh, feel on people. So it was great that we could achieve that nature with our new Zerg units. So... Uh, it, it definitely feels like Heart of the Swarm is about the Zerg. The, the Zerg, new Zerg units are just super creepy. And it's like, all right, we did that, you know, for Terrans and Wings of Liberty. Now we did that with the Zerg. Can't wait to see what we do for Legacy of the Void. So you mentioned the Swarm host. Um, has has it been different designing units for Heart of the Swarm now that esports has kind of exploded and become what it is um, in terms of, you know, wanting to make a unit readable, wanting to make it fun to watch, things like that? Um, not really. We've been doing that since uh, the original StarCraft came out. Uh, with this game, and with the Warcraft ones in general, uh, you have to have something that looks cool but is immediately recognizable. Uh, one of the reasons why in War II we wanted to have some different races, ogres and things like that, is because we didn't want everything just to be a green orc with shoulder pads, like which guy is which. Mm -hmm. Same with the, the Zerg and the Terran and Protoss. We, you know, we put a lot of thought into I mean, it's easy to make cool art for video games, but specifically for an eSport, you know, the Marauder needs to look different than the Viking, than the Thor, then, you know, so we did the same with the Zerg. That's why I was really pleased with the, the Swarm Host has a really iconic shape with that big round kind of bubble on its back, right? Uh, the Viper, it looks like a flying wasp, scorpion, dragonfly, something. It, you know, and it feels very Zerg. So like the, it's easy to make an identifiable silhouette, silhouette but, to combine it with the race, that's where the you know the real difficult part is. So it it was uh, something that we've been doing for years. So it's it's almost second nature to us. But the more units that each side has, the more difficult it is. Gotcha. Uh, so I'm sure the question everybody is thinking about right now is: Will fifty pounds? <laughs> oh, sorry. That too. Uh, will we will we hear a new uh, Torrent Chieftain single at BlizzCon this year? Nothing's uh, been confirmed, nor denied, but... The standard game developer answer. You know, uh, I don't know if the world would be ready for that. I don't think they're ready for the ones that we've already done. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably pretty accurate. If, uh, if Heart of the Swarm were a heavy metal band, which one would it be? If Heart of the Swarm were heavy... Uh, they would probably be some sort of uh, death or black metal band mm -hmm. uh, from one of the Scandinavian countries, and their logo would be completely unreadable. Nice. Excellent. Uh, well, thanks for talking to us, Sam. Um, remember, uh, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's uh, youtube.com slash PCGamer for more interviews like this, more Heart of the Swarm coverage, more awesome videos every week. And thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys later.